So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with just tackling this problem. What I see when I get this problem is something like this, right? So we already know that we have to have an input like this, where it is. I don't know how to write comments in MySQL, because I seem to have forgotten. I thought it was three check marks. OK. Projects, and then uh, over budget, or project forecast. All right, and then we're going to have something like um, course, like over budget. And we're going to have something like class. And then this is going to be like uh, within budget. And then that's going to be a string too, but whatever. All right, so this is our end goal, and this is our end result, right? And for me, the first thing that I do usually is I go, OK, what do I need to get to this, basically? Like, what is the table abstraction before getting to this? Because if you think about SQL, right, we're basically taking data. And we're aggregating it, and we're uh, deleting, sh and we're uh, cleaning things, and we're munging it, and we're basically transforming it into different states. So this is the end state. This is the beginning state, right? And so uh, the easiest way, you know, when you write queries, you basically go from state to state to state to end state. And so I want to go one state before this, basically. Like, what is the state before projects and project forecasts? Does anyone know what that data set would likely look like? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, it should contain like uh, the data set before this would compare two columns. One column will have the project budget, and the other column will have the uh, employees working, some of uh, the salary for the duration of the project for which employees are working on it. Gotcha. So, sorry, it's total salaries, right? Total salary. And then uh, duration duration and then subtraction of the budget times the total salary into duration yes so like um prorated and then i'm guessing we just have something like prorated salaries right uh, i guess the pro the budget is not prorated so it's just prorated salaries yeah so you're totally right um so basically right uh if we're trying to make this comparison right so if i go to course now I'm going to go to the next one, and then project budget is going to be, let's say, at the 100K, because this makes things easier. And then I'm going to go to total salaries, and it's going to be like, uh, let's say, 150, and then duration of the total salaries for the year. Right. So let's say it's 150, and then duration is going to be like, uh, it's like 0.5. Let's make this in like half a year sort of thing, like, okay, 0.5. Right. So this is like, this is our, our, our value is going to be like in the year. And then prorated salaries is then going to be some value that we have. And this could also be uh, total salaries. Well, I mean, basically all we do is we just multiply these two, right? So technically, we don't really actually need this. But this is like 75K, right? So yeah, you're completely right. Because if we have this, then we can totally get to here, right? Because we know that, um, one, this value is less than the project budget. So basically, all we'd have to run is a case when statement, right? So how do we get to this? And this is like going backwards again, right? Because uh, to get to this, we actually still need all our values in one row, right? Effectively, this needs to be on one row. This project needs to be in one row. And right now, what we have is we have a projects table, we have an employees table, and we have a departments and employees projects table, right? So we have all of our data. It's all separated. It's not like completely joined together yet, but we need to get it all joined into one table. And so when I know that like I need to get to this where all my data is joined together, then it's much easier to kind of start writing the query because then I know, okay, I just run a bunch of joins and then I can eventually get to this data point, right? Yeah, quick tip here is basically if you guys don't know what to join to what other tables, basically look at the fields, go backwards, figure out which fields you need, correspond them to which fields are in which tables, and then run those joins. So uh, for me, I know, and I'm just going to start writing query right now. So what I do is I write select first. I am at select. I write from, and I start out with the first table that I want. right? And for a lot of these questions also, you kind of have to think about joins. And so you always have to think about inner joins versus left joins versus right joins, right? I mean, but the, the main one is just inner joins versus left joins. There's no like outer join or right join. No one cares about those because that just adds complexity, right? 
we only care about left joins and inner joins because anything is a left join technically and anything is and besides that anything is an inner join if you encapsulate it does anyone have any questions about this so for this one do we need a left join or can we just use an inner join i guess an inner join is more than enough since yeah. we want to map like projects to employee it does like i'm not expecting to like there could, there could be project with no employees but at that point um like you cannot basically provide the final answer whether it's over budget or fine so like i would use an inner join yeah the spec doesn't really say if we care about projects and how many employees but i'd probably add that as assumption that you know if a project doesn't have any employees then it's going to be within budget it's probably not being worked on as well so it doesn't really make sense in that case so yeah inner join works does everyone understand why that's the case uh and everyone understand mateo's explanation for that like from what where i think like left join also will work like is there a reason that left join won't work because like from my perspective all projects should be listed right yes yes exactly so if so, you want all yeah. the projects to be listed from the project table with a project forecast then a left join on the project being on the left side and then employees on the right side wouldn't that make more sense it does make more sense it helps with more edge cases if there are any right if we make the assumption that um, there are only employees there's always an employee for a project or we don't care about the projects that don't have any employees then we can use an inner join without consequence and we don't have to think about all that stuff but if we want to be careful about it and we don't have that kind of assumption then we would probably use a left join as you said uh the reason why i generally prefer inner joins when i can get away with them is because it just makes your data a lot easier to deal with right because then you don't have to deal with null values as you do with left joins and so in an interview situation right pretend we're interviewing this is a great example of where you can run clarifications to the uh interviewer and just be like saying uh if you have this concept in your head you can ask them okay i know that employees can only work on one project at a time but can a project not have any employees and depending on how they answer that and i would actually what I would do as a tip as an for an interview too is I'd actually answer that question for them and be like, yeah, logically it doesn't really make sense to have a project without employees. So I'm just gonna do an inner join here. Uh, because you don't really want to actually give them a chance to respond and give you a really shitty situation to then uh, work into. Because actually a lot of the times when people are running these, um, unless they're just pulling these questions off of like, you know, our site, which I heard they do actually, but they make up like questions on their own. They literally like someone will go on and they'll make up, they'll look at their schema, they'll make up a SQL question, they'll throw it on here. And they won't really think about it. They won't think about the edge cases. And then when you go interview there, you'll come up with edge cases. They'll be like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. And then uh, the interviewer will kind of like, it'll spiral out of control a little bit. So keep it in scope, kind of went on a tangent there, but yes, uh, left join totally works. I'm going to use inner join here because it works for our case and I don't want to overcomplicate things. And it doesn't seem like there's any situation that doesn't need to account for that right now. So let's start writing it. So I'm going to write from projects, inner join, employee projects, employee projects as EP, as P, P.ID equals EP.project ID. All right. And then we're going to run one more inner join here, right? And so this is what we call a join table effectively, right? Because all it is a way to map like two different things together. So this is employees. These are projects. Uh, because of the fact that employees might be able to work on multiple projects or projects might have multiple employees. In this case, that's not the case. But in uh, maybe other problems, that might be the case. We have a join table, right? And so this is where there's a many to many relationship, right? So that's why we usually need join tables. If there's just one to many, it'd be probably different. And we'd probably just put like a project ID value like at the end of one of these tables or an employee ID value at the end of the project table. So when there's a join table, it's pretty obvious what you need to do next. You basically just need to join all the tables that are uh, related. And even if you don't really know where to go next, as long as you're like joining tables together, you know, you're not doing anything wrong. And so I, um, I was gonna encourage you to like maybe join tables first, even if you're stuck and then kind of go back and delete the joins that you don't need because it's always helpful to have more joins. And then lastly, I'm going to join in. There's nothing here about departments. 
so I don't have to join to this department table. Does that make sense too? So we got all of them and now we can grab all this data and then I'm going to actually delete that so I can run this. Cool. So we got real data here. And you'll notice one thing about us is we actually do use real, I mean, it's not real data, but it's like fake data, but um, at least you can see what we're looking at, right? So now we got salary, we got employee ID, we got the project that they're working on, um, and we got all this data that we can work with. So now that we have this, what is the next step here to get to those values that we wanted before? So we wanna go from here to here. Uh, how do we do that? Sorry, what? Aggregate predicate? Yes. What would the aggregate function be? So we made the assumption that there'd only be one employee working on one project at a time. The aggregate function? Yes. We can use like, uh, we can group by project and then sum the salaries of the employee for annual salary of the employee. Yes. And then for each employee, we can also sum up the time they are working on that project yep awesome so we got this so we have every single project that every employee is working on so we're grouping by the project and then are we so you said are we grouping by the employer too or no the employee team? we're summing right mm, no not by the employee just i think i think just by the project yep. and then and why is that the case right i guess going back to here we wanted one project on each row, right? Yes. Yep. And even here, right? We want one project by one row. So we know that we then have to group by just one project. This is super important. And it's just so easy once you start thinking about it, right? It's like, I want to group by this. That's it. I just want one project on each row. That's it. Then I group by one thing. That's all it is. If you, if you, have, if you want to group by multiple things, you group by multiple things. But group pies are just like, so great here. So back to this, right? We want to sum the salaries for every employee. So all we have to do here is just salary, right? And because of the case that it's only one employee on one project, we can do this effectively. Um, otherwise, we'd have to do the thing where we group by the project and then the employee and then sum the salaries, right? Um, so where some salaries can be like total salaries for the year on project, I guess, but I'm not gonna write that. And then what else do we have to sum? What else do we have to get? Now we have to get project budget, right? How do we get project budget? Can you go over to the table of the projects? Does it have like a budget? Projects do have a budget already. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we can just call the budget there without summing up. Okay. If we group by title, usually we have to do something to our other fields, but because these are one-to-one -one with each other, right, we usually don't actually then have to do anything. And so, but I think sometimes in different SQL engines, things go wonky if you don't group by other things. So I would either apply like a, just a dumb aggregation function to this, like max, where it's not going to be a max of anything, but just the existing budget. Or I would just group by everything else and say budget too. And for the duration, because they're both in here, we also can do the same thing here, right? So we're just going to do uh, like a date diff command, right? So end date minus start date, and then divide this by 365 because this value is going to give me the number of days between the two. And then this value, I then have to bring it back to the year, right? to get our value in the year. And then lastly, uh, we need the prorated salaries. And so technically here, I don't actually know if we can do this, but I think we would just multiply these two values together, but I don't think you can just do that in one query. So then we're gonna have to make it a subquery. So I'm gonna do by this, I'm just gonna group by three. So I'm gonna run this, cool, run query. Awesome, okay. So now we got title, we have budget, we have how long the project is gonna take in years. We have the total salaries for all the people in the year. Awesome. So I'm gonna wrap this in a CTE. And if anyone knows what a CTE is, it's basically a way to create like a temporary table uh, or like a view, right? So basically I can go like this. I can say with as data set, and then I can go select all from data set and it'll Give me the exact same results. Uh, I think it's like with data set as CT. Uh, yes. Catch. All right. Okay. So yeah. So we get the same thing, right? Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to name this as uh, duration so that it's not going to be weird. And now we just have to do the case win that we were talking about before, right? So uh, we have this right here. And then we, OK, cool. Uh, right, so we're going to go back here. And then we're just going to apply a case win right here. So um, specifically, what we're going to do right, is we still want the title in our output, p.title. And then we also want to just see if these are over budget. So we're just going to go case win duration times total salaries for a year is greater than the budget, then it is over budget. Else it is within budget. Right? And then end, and we have called that project forecast. Project forecast. Cool. Uh, right. So we're going to go back here, and then we're just going to apply a case one right here. So um, specifically, what we're going to do, right, is we still want the title in our output, p.title. And then we also want to just see if these are over budget. So we're just going to go case win duration times total salaries for a year is greater than the budget then it is over budget, else it is within budget, right? And then end, and we have called that project forecast, project forecast. Uh, you have to be pretty sensitive about this for our automatic graders, by the way. Because um, if you don't do this right, then it doesn't work. So cool, I think this looks right. I'm going to run the query. Says unknown title, p.title, yes. I Because of the fact that I referenced p right here as projects and then I turned it into data set, it does not work. So I have to, this would be like data set.title or I could just like not put it in. But run the query, code run successful. Oh, anyways. 